to if and why. This uh, forces immediate uh, resignation. Now, probably, once again, when we came into this position, yeah, this kind of position, so we have to go here and then here. And uh, okay, F7 is uh, one of the things. Uh, So we start with H4, the most confusing move. And this comes. Once again, black achieves the A. Now the luxury of having the pawn here, if you take the reverse of position, Or when this position comes, white can alternate the square. So if it is on h3, black takes the reverse uh, opposition, then he advances his pawn either one or either two. This makes the win for white. For instance, here, since it's on a black square, probably h3, h5, h4, king, no, h3. Cannot play. H so he has to go here. H pawn we cannot touch. Yeah. So we move here, here. Now this makes a this makes a draw. Once again. Yeah, but I think first you seven you play. But that is also some uh, point. So we start by here first. Yeah. Sorry, by here. Here, this is the position. In this position, we can easily play this. Or, you take this one, we'll do the jump. Yes. And it will win. So, if you take the, it's always confusing which position he has taken. If you take the normal position. No, this we saw. This we saw, yes. So, if he takes the wrong uh, position. Again, H5, F7, and then you King F6, H4, no, King G6. Now we have to do, we have to move into the same direction. H4, King G8, F7, King F8, King F6, yeah. H4, King G8, F7, King F8, King F6. Now H6 makes a draw. Hmm. Oh. No, I think first we have to... Play F7 and then and to he, see whatever yes, happens. Yes. What whatever he plays with the black pawn, we will uh, play alternate. The but it's, yeah. it's sometimes it's uh, so. This was the F7 first one. you play here. Yes. Here we play F7 and, and it wins. You, see, you yeah? play what you want. H5, King F6, H4. If I play H5, King F6, H4. Uh -huh. <laughs> then maybe not King F6, but. Uh, there's no other it will. So I think here we have to keep the pawn. We have to play ourselves into the color. Where this king stands. H4. Okay, H pawn is untouchable. He goes here. We push again. Goes here. We push again and <laughs> the draw is always difficult to <laughs> difficult to to give this, that's uh, probably oh, started uh, wait, wait, wrong. No, it's okay. I will just. Uh, you have to fix it. Yes. Sorry about it. Uh, it's always confusing this thing. So we came here in this position. We came here. We had problems with the direct opposition, yes, or reverse one. Okay, that will be fine. We had problems with the direct opposition or not, uh, or the other one, or the reverse one. Uh, we had uh, problems with the reverse one because he played immediately king e8. Okay, so king e8. So this is it. King is only five. No, I five. That doesn't matter. Yeah. So we come here and he goes there. So now let's calculate. 
f7 h5 yeah, f7 wins right away if this is there is no there should not be any problem here we just win yeah? yes. and if this is the other case no he should play uh, instead of f in uh, after f7 he should play h6 yeah, but that doesn't matter because we have enough yes. time here so that that's the thing that's the thing. Now, a couple of more things uh, to say about this type of ending. This is a very famous hand game for many different things. Here, still white is winning. And if we would have this, it would have been very easy. So, obviously, white has to move, otherwise conquering uh, f6 square would have been tremendously easy. But after white wins, white plays, when black steps, white can really give the e-pawn and then get the g-pawn and win the game. This which is really quite easy with one last trick to remember. If we go, we have to go to h6 to, to have the sure win. But like in this game, like the difference between rook a2 and rook b5 in this game, uh, even if you go to a6 you later, sorry, even if you go to f6 later, you can change it. But here you have to be careful because g6 makes a stalemate and a draw. But what about this one? Because in this one, we cannot afford sacrificing our f pawn uh, because we have the corner pawns. Here, the problem for black that uh, out of the related squares, for one square, white has two squares to step. So let's say we go here and then. No matter to which one we step, still we deliver the triangulation, mm -hmm. which is called triangulation. King f7, king f5, or king e8, king e6, then we have one. Historically speaking, Osnos, long time second of Korchnoi, who had some allegations, <laughs> not uh, give the moves of second game in this Dragon game in the World Championship match with Karpov to the other camp. He achieved this winning ending with Yudasin, Grandmaster Yudasin. So Grandmaster Yudasin said like, ah, this is easy draw. And they really agreed. Osnos later understood it immediately. <laughs> he was looking for Grandmaster Yudasin. Unfortunately, uh, couldn't find, uh, or fortunate for all of us, couldn't find uh, Grandmaster Yudasin. This was this happened in one of the Saint Petersburg uh, City Championships, and uh, Yudasin, the great player, he played candidates and stuff. I mean, he was probably himself, uh, you know, uh, was not so sure. It was a good uh, offer to uh, to Osnos, and Osnos uh, agreed. Now back to our ending. I mean, obviously, white didn't need this kind of uh, strange attacks. White played very straightforward. Just king c5, she kept the opposition with king c3. Now, I was a little bit surprised when I have seen in the chess news that uh, Sergey Surov, our uh, journalist, uh, you know, who, who is uh, one of the journalists attending all these uh, rounds. Uh, his wife is playing here as usual. She's playing very well, uh, uh, Mrs. Javakashvili. And uh, in his sight, it was written like uh, Black has lost uh, Drovish Rukhan. I mean, this rookhand game is really, really difficult for black. Somehow, for some strange reason, 
Black has gone directly to this rook end game. Look at the activity. Usually, this kind of end games you lose. You don't enter into these end games. You don't trade the pieces deliberately to go into such end games. Uh, probably before the free day, you know, seven rounds in a row, tough opposition, uh, Diamante, Daulite, got tired. Got tired and it looked to her, somehow it looked to her that whatever she does, a draw would have come. And uh, even the final part of the end game, she played it uh, poor. And, uh, and I would say like, uh, Sooner or later, she had to really to push this F pawn to create some weaknesses. Because if the pawn walks, uh, she may get some counter plays. So now we, we shall see if she will be zugzwanged. Once again, F3 is the move because King D3, King B4, these long lines uh, we have to deal with. Or if we move our rook to A1, allowing F3. You know, there is no need for it. We have to really play f3. And then, this should have happened sooner or later. Now, it's very important about uh, this side. I think black should keep the pawn on h7. Not on h6, neither on h5. To use h6 square for the rook. You will see that Soon, by some logical moves, black will be zuxuwak. And uh, even the rook, uh, the sixth rank, will be a little bit short for the rook. This is, this is really the best defense for black. So white may advance her pawn to h4, because in some moment, with rook a4, in such a position, she will zuxuwak black. And then, not only can take both pawns, b4 and f4, can hold her own on h4. It's, uh, should it be to h5, to h4, it's really, really very deep. It's beyond, uh, beyond my level, at least as I can easily say. If you bring Mr. Rubinstein, you know, if you resurrect uh, Akiba, uh, he would have a better <laughs> word about it. So, eventually, after King c5, Rook a4, the Zuxuan comes. A problem for black. Uh, if it had been on a5, if we move everything one uh, rank lower, that uh, possibly she would have some chances with, uh, in this case, with rook e5. But here, with rook e6, pawn advances. Black has no time to, to attack these pawns, to use e3 square, and to blockade the uh, a passer. In this sense, comes only one move, king b5. There is no other move. Rook takes, taken with the king, forced. If we exchange the rooks, we are immediately lost. And now, simple. Uh, white has to take. King e4, which looks like a better move. To bring your king to the other side uh, really spoils the things. This is an important position that we shouldn't have forgotten. Now comes rook h6. We have to protect this guy. And as you can see, white cannot cut black's king because of the unfortunate uh, position. If uh, in some endings we will come, white cuts, cuts the black king from the D line, black is lost. Now, black has enough time to bring his own king into the game. That's why, coming back into the critical position, here white should take the pawn, once again, Black, is, black will be happy to lose the h pawn and to bring his own king somewhere in the camp without being ca uh, cut uh, to draw this game. But uh, there is an unfortunate moment now.
best move. So king c5, rook a4, or king c7, the only move to win the game is rook b4. And black is losing with the king cut. If I put this king somewhere else, if it could enter inside, she would have a draw. Unfortunate uh, turn of events. Uh, I mean, she started... Uh, I mean, she really played with fire in this ending, and this is very close. Still, she could uh, create difficulties, uh, you know, like uh, uh, this. But uh, in some way, when uh, you see the ending, because of lack of activity, this is, uh, I mean, this, this shouldn't be chosen by her. And I don't know, maybe she was upset, uh, you know, this is many times... Uh, what happens with this kind of positions, you know, like uh, you got a bad position, you don't even, you know, make the most resilient choices. So she started with uh, d5, rook k1, d4, d5, k, h4. Here we already mentioned f4, f3, which was her best choice. She went. Uh, to c5. Now f4 is simple, but uh, I don't know. Just uh, white has picked up the pawn, which is uh, even enough because king c6, rook a4, king b7, white brings the king from d4 to e5 and wins with two passers. And in, in this case, now problem occurs that black cannot go to the 6 because of the rook exchange. Goes there, gets cut badly. People who remember how Taimanov, uh, Taimanov Larsen, once Larsen lost in a simple ending like this, once your king is cut, now it's, it is cut from the fifth rank. And this makes uh, the ending uh, immediately lost. For the Lithuanian player. Here there is really nothing to write home about. Ah, some, how should we call it, body check, you know, just with the elbow of the opponent, which I, I like these days, I saw you very much, you know, hits are allowed, it's a good game, I uh, recommend uh, for everyone, uh, you know, like sometimes uh, you, you, if the pack is over, uh, over the air, you can grab it, and uh, sometimes if you are not lucky enough, the goalkeeper hits you directly. So this is like the throws, throws the king. I mean, was it necessary? You, you may consider it brutal, but uh, it works. You really bring the king uh, one line uh, far away, one line further away. Just now the f pawn walks. Well, I mean, here, okay, seven also is, but there is no need uh, you know, to risk for this H and F pawn end game, just the F pawn walks. And as you can see, Kick is on the other side and uh, easily, you know, black, uh, I mean, white has won, won this game. And I wanted to make something uh, complementary, you know, on H and F pawn and games. Which is, uh, you know, we always talk like H and F draw, you know, H and F, uh, she could run to this end game. We already spoke about this uh, end games, uh, just to re refresh in our minds, we have uh, we have looked into this ending yeah, like uh, here we said that uh, if white brings both rook and king on, e, on the 8th rank and pushes uh, 
and then he can win the game. But it's really, really difficult to lose uh, such positions for uh, professionals. It's a, it's a simple one. And uh, the funniest thing, uh, you know, if everybody thinks like uh, Rook should always stay on the eighth rank, and if Black is on the move to play King G6, even this is not false. I mean, Black can live, but now he has to be really careful. Just makes a draw because of the rook's position. This we have already seen. Here, also we have a fight for the checking distance. I mean, this would have been lost for black because of unable to give checks from uh, far away. But what all these things have to do? with uh, rook and h pawn and games. It has a lot of direct interest into this endgame. And we always say like uh, she runs, she could run, you know, to this h and pawn ending. Imagine that, we got two pawns. If they are far advanced, we queen one of them, escort one of them to queen. Conceivably, white will try to push the h pawn to sacrifice, to divert it. That's why a classical position, in a classical position, this pawn should be blocked by black's king. The other one is candidate to be pushed because this is our crucial pawn. We will use this pawn. And say like something like this occurs. Here the principles are that black simply defends Discarding this pawn, black defense, <laughs> got stuck. Black defense against the f pawn. Like there is only f pawn over the board. Does this one has an impact in the game? Yes, it may. Now I will show you how people lose this position. How people lose this position. It's really very, very interesting by uh, you know by small things. Now the main point, crossing this guy over is impossible. And king f6 black can take, king takes h6. Coming back to our issue, you know, with one pawn makes a draw. Even I can tell you that famous defense here, even this position happens, rook e8 looks like winning the game, but uh, there is the stalemate. I don't know if everybody has seen that uh, here the stalemate makes the draw. So this side is unusable for the king. Then comes this side, enters.